Welcome to the Work Your Wellness Biz Podcast, a podcast for nutrition and fitness professionals. I'm your host, Jess Freeman, here to help you save time and look good online. Hello, friends. Welcome back to another episode of the Work Your Wellness Biz podcast. I am so excited today to have another friend and colleague of mine here on the podcast. Today, I am talking with Ashley Stewart. Ashley is a systems expert who specializes in creating business systems for nutrition professionals. Started as a systems-focused virtual assistant company in August of 2018, Ashley Stewart Assistance has grown to specialize in seamless systems setup, taking your ideas and workflows and translating them into repeatable processes that get your business results. I am so excited. I love nerding out about systems and tools. And I feel like what Ashley and I talk about today is super valuable and not overwhelming. (laughs) So I hope you enjoy this episode. And if you would like to dive in deeper with systems, Ashley is also going to be an expert inside the Better Collective, my membership community in just a few weeks. So if you want to learn even more from her, even have a chance to ask her some questions, as well as learn from all the other guest experts that are inside the Better Collective, feel free to check out the link in the show notes, see how you can get involved and join the Better Collective. But without further ado, let's hop in. So welcome to the show, Ashley. Hey, how are you? Good. I'm so excited because I I'm not a systems like person like you are, but I do love systems and being organized because I'm an Enneagram one. So <laughs> I'm that's like, all you need is to actually enjoy them, like even yes. just the use of them. You don't have to want to set them <laughs> up. Just as long as you can get behind actually using them, I feel like you'll be good. Yeah. Um, so we're just gonna dive right in because we have a lot to cover and why not just cut through the chit chat? We already did a pl- tons of chit chat before That's we started true. recording. <laughs> um, so first, I think it would be great for you if you could share how you define systems. Yeah, absolutely. So I think one of the biggest misconceptions that I end up finding when I work with a new client is that when I say systems, they tend to think the tools that they're going to use to make something happen. So, you know, practice better might be a system that they're using to manage their clients or, or click up might be the system they think they're using to manage their tasks. And while that's part of it, systems to me is really kind of the combination of the processes that you are actually doing and the tools that you, you use to make those processes happen. So when we can actually break systems down into those two pieces, a couple of things happen. One, you kind of get a really good un- understanding and explanation of, of what your business actually needs to function, what those steps are that you go through, what those pieces are that need to fall into place for you to actually work with a client. And you also end up with this ability to grow within your tools. So even if you find yourself outgrowing a tool or needing to grow into another version of a tool, when you have your system set up as basically a mix of both the processes that happen and the tools that can support it, then changing that tool or upgrading that tool to support the process isn't quite so overwhelming because you're not basing your whole system around one specific tool. You're basing your system around the process and what actually needs to get done. And the tool is really just a support piece that comes into the overall system itself. So if instead of thinking of systems as, as those apps or as, you know, the websites you go to to put information in about your client, you can really think of that system as the how and the why behind what you're doing. The tool just becomes the what and that what can kind of be switched and and moved around as need be if you find yourself outgrowing them. Mm, Yes. Yeah, that makes sense. Because like when I switched from Dubsado to HoneyBook, I didn't really think it was that big of a deal or overwhelming because it was like, it can do this and that. Like some of the workflow things had to change a little bit because like Dubsado could do this, but HoneyBook only does this, you know, but like it wasn't a huge, it was just like 
okay, well, like, I'll just set it up this way then. (laughs) So it was just that process, like you said. Right. And once you know what that process is, you know, that's really one of the first steps that I take with clients, no matter what we're doing is walk me through your client process, walk me through the way that you work with people. Because what we can then figure out is what tools you actually need to support that process. And like you said, if you do need to make a switch, or if you decide to make a switch, you're just really taking the the process and and moving it to another tool. And it really helps too, because so often I get asked, you know, what's the best client management tool? What's the best project management tool? My answer is always the same. There is no best. The best one is the one that works for you. And I think without knowing what your process is, if you are just basing your, you know, tool decision off of what somebody else on Instagram is doing, you're going to find yourself in a hole because no two businesses are the same and you really need to know how you're doing and why you're doing what you're doing before you can make those decisions on tools. Right. Right. Do you, do you have any tools that you don't like? Like, I know you said there's no best one, but is there any that you don't like even secretly? (laughs) Well, maybe secretly. So secretly, I don't like Trello for project management. I don't like Trello. Um, I just find it to not be as robust as a lot of the other systems that I work in. Um, I tend to work obviously a lot with um, nutrition providers, health and wellness coaches. And my favorite in that that space for client management is definitely practice better. Um, I don't not like any in there, but there are definitely ones that fit certain practitioners better. Um, if you're, you know, an insurance, if you're taking insurance and you're actually providing through insurance, then practice better may not be your best option and simple practice may be better. Um, but when it comes to ones that I like actually really don't like, I think Trello is the only one. Uh, <laughs> and then, you know, I think that there are other, there are other client management tools out there that can be very overwhelming for people. Um, Dubsado is a great option for a lot of people, but it can be very overwhelming for some. And it's not always the, the most necessary. Um, so it just may not be the best option. So, you know, I have my favorites. I love ClickUp. That's my go-to for project management. I, um, my, um, my current client management is going through a little bit of an overhaul, but I actually am kind of swapping things around on how I do things there. And then I use Flowdesk for my email marketing because I think it's simple and everything I'm doing in email marketing is very simple. I don't have a lot of kind of different pathways, but I also love ConvertKit. I think ConvertKit's a great option too. So, so poor Trello is the only one that I don't really <laughs> don't like. <laughs> by itself in a corner I'm like you just stay over there (laughs) I I don't like I don't like Trello I also don't use Asana I I I barely use ClickUp come on we need to get you I have it I just see I need to work with you to like because I'm like using it but not like for everything and so it's the one thing like I have several friends who do like systems and project like and every single one of them is like what do you mean you don't use a project management software like what do you mean that you're not using like asana or trello or anything and i'm like i don't i don't know i just like I know. I, it it makes me I, a little sad inside but i'm letting it go <laughs> it's okay it's, it's like when people Ashley's tell me questioning they don't have, our friendship <laughs> exactly uh yes a little bit it's okay i mean we're gonna make you a convert but at this okay. point i it's the one thing that makes my business actually like run and function and i don't understand how other people do it and it might just be the way my brain works i've told my husband like numerous times there's just no more room up there that like it has to go somewhere else or everything i'm supposed to be doing is just lost in la la land somewhere because i don't remember it so everything i do especially obviously related to my business and then even project management tools related to some like long reach goals and personal goals too, I'll put in there because if I don't, then I'll sit down at the beginning of the day in the morning and be like, okay, so So what am I, what am I working on? Exactly. Because I have no idea. So I just, I think part of it is that I don't understand how people have this wonderful space in their brain that they can hold on to things and actually remember what they're supposed to be doing. It's, it's a little bit of jealousy to be completely honest. (laughs) Well, as I move into motherhood, maybe that will change. And I will be like, yeah, I'm going to need to to put this somewhere. Cause that was one thing that another systems friend said to me, she was like, but 
because she is a strong Enneagram one, just like me. And she's like, but like, how do you, all these ideas that you have or like things for the future, like, where do you put them? And I'm like, in my brain, um, no, in my brain on a post-it note. No. no, I don't know. Like I use, I love HoneyBook. Like my client system is, is nailed down, like convert kit, you know, like I have tools that I use, which are not systems as you already said, That's okay. but, um, yeah, I don't have like a, here's like, like, I know people who are like, oh, in my sauna, that's my to do list. And like, so I know what I'm doing all week. And they're like, how do you keep track of that? And I'm like, I just look at my calendar or my planner. And I'm like, okay, I'm working with Ashley this week. And I have a call on Wednesday. And <laughs> you said like, a post it note for things. I actually found a post it note I wrote to remind myself to do something the other day that literally just said urgent on it. That's it. That was all it said. There were no other notes. Like I get so overwhelmed by things that are just not in my system that I have a note that just says urgent. What's urgent? Who's urgent? What am I supposed to be doing? I have no idea. What is urgent? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm, I'm holding up three different post-it notes yeah, to Ashley beautiful. right now. <laughs> yeah. I'm a little terrified. <laughs> now she's making a cringe face. <laughs> she's like, oh, okay, now we're gonna need an intervention. Well, we're gonna we're gonna get you there. Don't worry. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna talk. We we're gonna well, talk. After we talk today um, about all of the things you can do with your systems, maybe <laughs> we can start moving you over. Yeah, you I just need a system for like ideas and notes. That's what I need a system for. That's a project management tool. Yeah. <laughs> Circle back. Okay. <laughs> Circle, circling back. Um, so we are going to talk about, there are, you, you say there are three crucial systems that nutrition professionals need in their business. Absolutely. What are those three? Yeah, for sure. So the three really big systems that you have to have, or that I feel you have to have are a client management system, a project management system, and an email marketing system. And so your client management system is really the way that you interact with clients. And I like to think of it, like if you ever worked in a restaurant, it's like your front of house, right? It's what your clients see. It's how they decide to work with you. It's how you can bill them. It's how you're setting up appointments. It's often the way you're doing things like taking notes and sharing them with clients or keeping them for yourself. It's how you're keeping track of those appointments and making sure that everything stays in the right process for the right client. And those are really important because even if your system isn't something that your clients necessarily see the inner workings of, they see the benefit of it when they sign up with you and it's nice and smooth, when they are able to you know, book their own appointments and know that they're getting time with you, when they're able to send you forms electronically and make that a really easy, smooth process. And when that system is fluid, Two things tend to happen. One, to be completely honest, a lot of times people don't even say anything, but sometimes that's better, right? Sometimes the fact that people are very clear on exactly what needed to get done, you don't get a lot of feedback and a lot of questions. And that's not always a bad thing because people knew what the next step was supposed to be. And the other piece that I think happens a lot is that you tend to get these referrals in from those clients that were able to speak so highly about not only were you a great practitioner and did you help them reach their goals, but the process of working with you was so smooth and it was so easy for them to work in and they felt you know taken care of throughout the entire process. So I think your client management system is really like key number one. Number two is going to be that project management system, which again, very important. Just going to eat. <laughs> right. And so what I, what I, like to think of that is, is it's the back of the house. It's the things that you're doing in your business to make your business work. It's the big ideas that you're keeping track of. It's how you write social media posts. It's how you're keeping track of content that you're creating or new programs that you're developing. And it's the way that you're really moving your business forward. Because if you have a really great client management system, that's awesome. But you're kind of held into that, that way of working with clients. If you're never building your business and kind of continuing to see what that client's need are, how they're evolving, and how you can kind of evolve to meet it. And then last but not least, you have your email marketing. And I am a very strong proponent of email marketing. I think, you know, I think social media marketing is fantastic. I think a lot of people see really great results with it. 
I am a like nervous Nelly and I don't love the idea that someone else has control over how I can connect and contact people. So that's really what social media is. At any point in time, that system could go down and you could lose those, those contacts. And if you really put all your eggs in that basket, then what happens? What happens to your marketing channels and what happens to your marketing pathway? So really having a system in place for a way that you can connect with clients, with leads, with potential clients, with past clients, with, you know, people who are interested in learning more about you through email and through that email marketing platform and through that, that system, I think is really important. And, you know, I think a lot of us are starting to like kind of come back to email marketing. I feel like there's a very big swing towards social media and now it's kind of starting to swing back a little bit and having a good marketing mix is great, but your email marketing system is such an important part of that kind of three system stack. Um, so that's not to say that those three are the only systems you need. There are plenty of people who maybe need, you know, a content management system for things like courses or need a, you know, inventory management system if you're actually selling product. But to get off the ground, to start a practice, to start as a successful nutrition professional, those three are are key. Those are, are necessary. Um, first of all, yes, email marketing is so important. And I know that people are like, oh, but it, like, I don't know what to say and emails and newsletters, blah, blah, blah. But I'm like, like you said, like, what if your account could get deleted. I've seen accounts get hacked and like, or Instagram, you know, bans you or not like, I haven't seen anyone get banned, but it's like they constant, I've just seen a lot of people in the last few months who are like getting more and more frustrated with creators being silenced. This reel is taken down because of a copyright violation or whatever. And it's like, this music was available from Instagram. Like that doesn't make any sense, (laughs) you know? (laughs) Yeah, like, yeah, it's true, though. I mean, there's just so much ownership that that's kind of given to the platform. Um, And, you know, right or wrong, it's just how it is. And if you don't have a way to to back up that communication, then it just, it can be tough. And I think that the really nice thing about email marketing is that you get to control so much how you present yourself and the information that you're presenting. And, you know, learning the way that your leads and your clients like to receive that information. And it can be such a, a really cool way to get creative. And I'm, I like data. I'm a data nerd. I like to go through and see what's working and what's not working. And I think email marketing is such a cool way to be able to do that because you can really track how people are interacting with and what content they're interacting with and, and how it's working. So yeah, I, I, you know, I tell people, I feel like I should like shout it from a soapbox. Like <laughs> you need an email marketing system. Off yeah. of soapbox. No, I mean, it's, it is a hundred percent. I will stand on that soapbox with you. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Good. <laughs> so if someone, I let's, I don't want to, I, hopefully this is not the case, but someone doesn't have any systems set up or maybe they have kind of things like piece together right now. And they're like, okay, so yeah, I, none of these are like solid foundations. Which one do you think they should start with first? So I don't know if there's necessarily a specific one that you need to start with, right? I don't know if there's one clear answer to say everyone should start with X. What I do think you need to start with and what you need to understand is your client process, how those clients are finding you, how clients are are starting the process of saying they want to work with you, how clients are signing up, how you're how they're getting billed. You know, that's one of the the big things that I often see people forgetting is how are people gonna pay me? And you know, piecemealing together Venmo, not a great option. Like we really should be looking at at safe options and ways to be exchanging money and funds. Um, So I think my suggestion to people is sit down literally with a piece of paper, or if you're someone who works better on a computer, that's fine too. And type out what that process looks like from start to finish. Don't skip a beat. No, you know, My client logs onto my website and clicks on my free discovery link button. My client fills out an application to work with me and that application sent to me. And what what does that process look like? And what do those steps look like? And I think one of the biggest um, pieces of pushback that I get there is often, 
I don't know what that's supposed to look like, or I'm just starting out and how, you know, how do I create that? And that's fine. I get that. Make it up. Make up what you want it to look like. <laughs> like start there. What on a perfect ideal day, if you had clients coming to you, you know, back to back to back, what would that process look like? And then let's build systems to make that happen. Because the time to put systems in place for that ideal day is now. It's not once you get to the point that you have so many clients coming in that you need to put a system into place. Because if you are waiting until that point, you're going to feel like you're playing catch up and you're going to feel like you're consistently behind and you're leaving money on the table because you don't have the systems to support the growth that you just went through. Whereas if you put a system into place or you put systems into place that are either where you need to be, or even a step ahead, then you can grow into them and you can continue growing into them. And we can can kind of continue moving those systems forward with you as opposed to having them catch up to where you are. Yeah. I remember uh, before I first signed up for Dubsado, which is what I used to use, I was piecemealing like, okay, I send like this Adobe PDF thing. I wasn't even hello sign. I don't think it was like... (laughs) I figured out I could literally just, just a piece of paper with a pigeon that you said. Like, yeah, through the air. like <laughs> I, I don't even know what I, it was like. I literally could send a PDF for signature, like, and they could sign digitally, but it was, you know, then I had to, it was complicated. And then like the invoice came from wave and then I had my questionnaires in type form. And then I was like using base camp for like the project communication And then I switched to something else and then I switched to something else after like after that for like the project part, like Basecamp, then something called Breeze. And I don't even remember what was after that. And it was it was a hot mess. (laughs) Like, I mean, I had it in my brain. I was like, yeah, like I just do this. But it was so many steps and I was spending so much time, like even though I thought like, oh, it's fine, like. And just, you know, type in my invoices and finally switch to Dubsado. And then I was like, oh, oh, that's how this is oh. supposed to work. Yeah, <laughs> but, it, but it was also because I was definitely guilty of that. Like, oh, it's twenty dollars a month and I don't want to pay for it. And like, hello, I'm making way more than twenty dollars a month. <laughs> so like, you know, this is something I can afford. Um, but it was like I definitely thought. I fell into that trap of thinking, oh, I need to wait until I have X amount of clients till I really need this. And then by then it was like, oh my gosh, to try and transition like those current clients or then like halfway through, it was like literally, it was like a random like February. I'm like, okay, I'm going to start using Deb Sato. Okay. So now I have to like figure out this new process with these new clients, but keep up this old process to finish out these old clients. Oh yeah. And it's like, no. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. And honestly, I will be like completely transparent and I'm going through some of that right now because I'm transitioning away from Deb Sato and setting up kind of a different process with a payment processor that I I'm using. And, you know, it's funny because I'm actually moving away from a an all-in-one platform to a platform that has a couple of different moving pieces just because of how I wanted to be able to set it up. But now that I'm doing it, I feel so much more confident in the way that I'm, I'm putting it together because I've used an all-in-one platform before. And I think it's helped me see too that like, Again, it all came down to the process. I wrote out the process before I even got started and said, okay, well, which tools support this part of the process and how do they work together and how do they talk to each other? The answer there is Zapier. They all talk together because of it. Um, And so, you know, how can I make this process stay the same or truly get, you know, better for my clients while still maintaining you know, the ease of use through the new systems that I want to use. So there's just, you know, there's so many options out there. And I think once you actually know what that process either is or what you want it to be, and that's fine. The the answer can be right now it's a hot mess, but I want it to be X, Y, and Z. Okay, well then let's figure out the tools to support what you actually want it to be and put those pieces Mm -hmm. into place. Yeah. And I think we have to keep in mind that that process can change oh, yeah. and and evolve. Like I remember when I switched to Dubsado, it literally was just like contract, invoice, you know, schedule a call. I had a questionnaire 
And that was probably it. And now I have several emails that go out like this information. Here's this now Loom video. Okay. Like just all these different pieces. It's kind of like an education onboarding. It's not like just contract invoice, which is fine. Like that was just what I started with, but now I've evolved it over time. And it's something I'm constantly tweaking. Oh yeah. Like, just yesterday, I logged into HoneyBook because I was like, oh, I should send that in an email. <laughs> like, <laughs> let me, you know, like, do I need to create a new email? Do they need another email for this? Or can I just like tag this onto something? Because I don't want to like send 20 emails. <laughs> right. I know. If, um, I, if it were me, it would be like a novel that came over for people. Right. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, this like, is here's a this mini course <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> before we work together. Um, but yeah, I think it's just that process continues to evolve. And I always tell people, Again, I'm not a systems person like Ashley, but <laughs> I do nerd out about it some. And I always say, like, just think about what you would want as a client. Like, what do you want that to process to feel like? What kind of education do you want them to have beforehand? All that kind of stuff. Like, think about that. Right. Exactly. And like, you know, I think you kind of hit the nail on the head with it being ever evolving. What ends up happening is you put this process into place of what you want it to look like. And then suddenly you realize that three of your last five clients asked you the same question. Okay, great. Well, then how can we take that information that you just learned? You just learned that three out of five people were having a problem with X, Y, and Z and build it into your, to your systems and to your tools knowing that you still have this great shell of a process that you've created that we can use in order to support everything. So knowing what kind of that start and end point need to be, you can shift, you can move. But when you start with a good base, then you're not really going, you know, you're going from A to B to C instead of saying like, okay, well, I need to go from A to Z because I haven't done any of this kind of middle work. Um, So I, you know, like you said, I don't know if there's one specific system that you need to focus on first. It's really just knowing what that process needs to be. Would you mind sharing or like expanding a little bit on, cause you mentioned you're moving from Dubsado to kind of like a different setup. Is that uh, first clarify, like, do you think, well, I mean, I, I already kind of know the answer, but for the listeners, <laughs> um, cause there's no one perfect tool for everybody, but do you think there are situations where an all in one is good or bad, or does it depend and why you're okay moving away from that all in one system? Cause for me, like my first thought is like, but like, moving away from an all-in-one does seem like stressful. Like I, yeah, <laughs> gr- I granted, I, granted <laughs> I don't know what your setup is going to be. So like, and, and I don't have to hear the specifics, but I think people might need, might want to hear that like all-in-one versus not all-in-one. <laughs> well, and I can give you kind of a good rundown of what my new updated kind of process will look like. And basically there were a couple of reasons that I switched One of the big reasons was because I ended up investing in Thrivecart at the end of last year. Um, It was like my end of year, I need tax write-off money and (laughs) I'm going to buy this big thing that I think I'm going to use maybe at some point. Um, And so I ended up investing in Thrivecart at the end of last year for, you know, not only that reason, but also because I'm hoping at some point to get into providing more affiliate opportunities and potentially some more digital products. And Thrivecart was really going to be a lot more supportive of that than Dubsado was where I was before. So when I moved over to Thrivecart, I was kind of, to be honest, piecemealing together a payment processor with Dubsado, utilizing that Dubsado system as an all-in-one for everything but payment. So I was... um, basically zapping anyone that paid me in Thrivecart over to Dubsado. They received their contract, they received, you know, their scheduler and all of that kind of good stuff. And while the system itself was somewhat working, I was running into some glitches. I was running into some, some kind of hiccups, not to the, you know, not to the issue of either system, but just the nature of the beast kind of attaching multiple things together and and the way that the two platforms were working. So, I decided that I really wanted to have something that was a bit smoother. And to me, that smoothness came in 
by starting out with the one thing I knew I wanted to keep, which was Thrivecart. So I knew that I wanted to stay there. And then thankfully, if you've never used Thrivecart, if somebody, if anybody's never used it, it actually has a lot of um, pre-built in integrations. There's a lot of really good options in there that you can kind of start out with. So what happens now is a client will purchase in Thrivecart. They're actually automatically sent um, a, a link to a mini course, which is really funny that you said that. <laughs> love it. Love it. <laughs> so it's not actually a mini course. It's just a really good way to organize information. But they basically get added to a teachable course that walks them through the steps that they need to get ready for our day together. So this is specifically right now for my, my systems in a hurry day. And when they walk through that, process, what's in there then is a link to their contract through HelloSign that they can go in and sign nice and easily. It's a link to my Calendly where they can go ahead on in and actually book their day. And then it's just a link to information that they need to provide to me. And I liked the ability to kind of have an all-in-one without having an all-in-one. You know, when people see that mini course, they don't really realize that there's a couple of other programs that are going on together to make that piece happen. They're just logged into it and they're just sent the the information that they need. Um, I also wanted to switch because as I've been with ClickUp over the past year to 18 months, I've seen how many new pieces they've started to put into place. Um, one being the ability to email directly from ClickUp so I can literally do everything in there. And then the other being a very direct integration between Calendly and ClickUp. So when something is booked in Calendly, it automatically gets added into my ClickUp and really everything happens under one roof. So, you know, I knew that Calendly wasn't going, I'm sorry, ClickUp wasn't going anywhere. And I knew that Thrivecart wasn't going anywhere. And really my biggest challenge just became how to make those two things work together without having to kind of recreate the wheel. So do I think that there's one time when things are better as an all-in-one versus not? Um, I think if you're someone who needs a platform that is HIPAA compliant, you need to stick with an all-in-one because if not, you're going to start to find yourself with and in some hairy situations, you know, as you're trying to zap or send information between multiple platforms. Um, I always like to like add this to people or share this with people as a general PSA. Zapier is not HIPAA compliant. So if you are attaching programs, even if both of them are, once you put that information into Zapier, once it basically picks it up and carries it from one platform to another, it's no longer HIPAA compliant. So if you're you're working within those two platforms, Zapier will tell you that it, it itself is not HIPAA compliant. Good note. Yeah, it's a, it's a good thing to know, right? And it's a good thing. I'm, I'm not telling people and I will never tell people, I'm not a lawyer, I'm not telling people that you have to do things one way or the other. It's just a good piece to keep in the back of your mind as you're deciding what information gets sent between where and by whom and how, right? So if you're sending out you know, what does the information look like if you're if you're putting it into Zapier? Are you, you know, is it information that can be shared? What does that look like? Um, but yes, Zapier itself is unfortunately not HIPAA compliant. Um, so I would suggest anybody that needs that HIPAA compliance stays under one roof um, just to make things easier. And then I know that there are some people who love all-in-one platforms that do everything, right? Um, Kajabi is a great example that can literally do it all. I mean, you can run courses, you can run email marketing, you can do really anything and everything. Um, and I think Kajabi is a phenomenal course platform. I think it does a good job with other things as well. I will be the first to tell you, though, that things that happen all under one roof like that make me twitchy. Same, um, same. Because if, if Kajabi ever went down, then what happens to everything else? You know, not only does your, does your website go, but all of your courses, like everything, it makes me, it's like... It literally it keeps me up at night. <laughs> it makes me very nervous. Like everyone loves, not everyone, lots of people love Kajabi. And yeah, like you're if you're using it for both email and courses and your website, I'm like, if it goes down, which is probably rare. But, oh but, yeah, absolutely. But it's just... It, yeah, it makes me twitchy, like you said. I, I also really don't like... Um, platforms that don't let you export and Kajabi does not let you export. And while redesigning a website, usually you're just copying and pasting text or getting all new copy, but those blog posts and podcast episodes that you've loaded up 
Mm -mm, No, like I have like 300 blog posts on my website and <laughs> you imagine? like trying You're to like move. No. I, mm -mm. So I, that's like the one thing I always look at when like new website platforms come out. I know this is not client management, but like, that's the one thing that I always look at is does this new platform let you export? I always like, I go to FAQ. Sometimes I've even like inquired with the support team and they're like, no, cool. I'm not, I'm not going to recommend you. Sorry. <laughs> I mean, it's a good, it's, Things like that, though, are the, the pieces that we often don't think about, you know, because we, myself included, I mean, ClickUp is a great, a great example, right? I have a lot of things in there. Now, mind you, you can export and there's different ways to pull information, but I have a lot of things in there. And I think that that, that can be scary for people too, because what happens if the business decides to close, right? Like I know a lot of us and a lot of people in the kind of entrepreneur space may have been with... Um, Wow, now I can't even remember the name of my bank because it sounds exactly the same as my new one. Um, but there was a bank that was just open, perfect digital bank. Everybody was on there. And then within like 60 days, it shut down and you had to find a new bank. And now you're exporting all of this information. And so, you know, things change and you've, you've got to, again, know that process and that how um, so that if you ever needed to, you could, you could really recreate it. Um, I'm also not a huge, I, I think, well, I think it's very interesting when there are platforms that try to do everything, especially when we're in an, in, in an industry where niching down and knowing your client and knowing exactly what they need is so important. You know, why do we then expect our platforms and our tools to be able to do anything and everything for us? And that's not to say that you need to have like 50 tools that each one does something so exponentially specific, but like, we also don't need to expect that every tool does every single thing that we need it to do. I would rather have someone with a really clear process with five tools, as opposed to someone with kind of a piecemeal together process with one, because they just want to stay in one tool and they don't, they, they're willing to make sacrifices on their process in order to do that. So I, you know, all in ones. Eh. Yeah. I love that you pointed out the like we in our industry love to niche down. So why are we wanting our tools to do everything? Like I love that you said that because yes, <laughs> yeah. yes, uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, this has been so good. We covered a lot. I think these are really, really important systems to set up. Um, so I would love for you to share where we can connect with you because I'm sure people are like, okay, well, I need help. And Ashley can help. So let us know how you can help, where we can connect with you, all that fun stuff. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I am available on my website, ashleystewartassistance.com. It's ntsassistance.com. I really should have thought that one through before I, I grabbed the URL. Um, and then also on Instagram and Facebook at the same address, Ashley Stewart Assistance. Um, I have a free Facebook group called Systems for Health. And if anyone's interested, um, we chat about, you know, different platforms. I do platform walkthroughs and really just kind of share some general information on there about ways that you can utilize systems in your nutrition business. Um, and then I'm always more than happy to chat about ways I work with people, both through my systems in a hurry days, um, which is basically a 24 hour turnaround on, you know, platforms or tools that you're looking to set up or some of our larger scale projects that I'll do with clients too. Awesome. I will put the links to those in the show notes so you guys can go check out Ashley. Uh, but thank you again for being on the show. Show. 